What is going on world? I am the Hungarian experiment. And if you've been following along my journey, then you will know that I just finished up reading this amazing resource, Early Retirement Extreme by Jacob Lund Fisker. Now, I have to give big props and a big shout out to Matt McKeever. He is another YouTuber here in London, and I would have not known about this book. I wouldn't have absorbed the amazing information and ideas and theories without him. So thank you very much, Matt, for turning me on to this book. And he actually gave me this book. And what he just did is he he's bought like 20 of these books and he's just handing it out to people that he believes could really benefit from them. He's spreading that knowledge around. So I think what he's doing is amazing. Uh, I think this book is absolutely amazing as well. And as I mentioned there, I just finished this book up. And what I do with books and resources that I'm reading or analyzing is that as I go through my journey, I will document and take pictures pictures from these books, post them up onto Instagram with my own kind of notes there on the side. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys are following me along on Instagram because you guys will get to follow along as I'm reading these books. And then once I'm done reading these books after a month or two, I go back to Instagram, I collect all those notes that I made and then I post them up all onto my blog. So if you guys are interested in picking up this book, I will have that blog post going up on the same day that I load this video up here. So that will be in the description box below. Again, and if you are interested in this book, then I really suggest checking out that blog post because I have about 10 to 20 pages from this book along with my notes. So you guys will get to see if this is beneficial for you along your journey right now in life. But what I wanted to do today, now that I finished this book and I posted up something onto my blog from a very specific page from this book. So I just got back from the gym here. I'm at like 18 hours fasted right now. So I am a little depleted, but I really wanted to get this video out before I make food here. And I want to discuss this one page. And this all has to do with cultural perceptions in life. So the problem is that there's a cultural perception of what constitutes a good house. And despite or perhaps due to all the failures mentioned above, the suburban house with a lawn, a picket fence, and a car or three parked in the driveway is the pinnacle to attain. Like a peacock's tail and in general for most status symbols, the more non-productive and inefficient they are, the better status symbols they make. After all, if someone can afford to use a lot of resources for non or even counterproductive ways, he must be rich, powerful, strong, etc. And the suburban house is able to absorb tremendous amounts of money, which makes it an excellent status symbol. So now that we got that out of the way there, this is what I want to discuss. These are ideas that I want to be discussing along my journey. Cultural perceptions. I believe that a lot of us right now in society are very hypocritical because although we are getting new values and morals and these are just being thrust upon us with the internet, we are still locked into these cultural perceptions in life and we contradict our values and our morals to fit into those cultural perceptions. Some of us are so connected to these cultural perceptions that we are emotionally attached to it. And when someone tells us something that goes against these perceptions, we have, we get emotional, we get angry or upset and we try to defend ourselves. And this is what's going on right now. As our morals and our values are changing, a lot of us are still hypocritical in nature because we have this thing, love and sex and money. And these are the two things that are very taboo in society still. Other things like homosexuality, religion, all these things are, you're allowed to discuss these things. You're allowed to analyze these things and critique these things. But if you trigger someone by discussing a cultural perception, something that they are very emotionally attached to, you can't have a logical discussion with these people because they are so emotionally attached to their idea that they are willing to justify ridiculous notions in the name of that emotional connection. And now I said, you know, status symbols are one, one problem that we have, but it's all these cultural perceptions of what is right and wrong in terms of how we as human beings live our lives and interact with each other. And I believe this is fading as we enter the new renaissance. Having the internet here to reveal these hypocrisies, to reveal how we are contradictory when we believe one thing, yet we want to stand up for something in this light. And now I believe that this is slowly fading as we enter the new renaissance. As people become more informed and they begin to see other people's perspectives in life, 
we are able to reveal and show these cultural perceptions, but this is still going to take time. There are still many cultural perceptions like these status symbols that it's going to take generations and generations of changing people's mentalities for them to think differently. People are still going to be chasing that money. And that's what I'm currently trying to show in my discussing racism with racists and bigots video that these people have such cultural perceptions and they believe that they're standing up for something that they're self-righteous about because they're emotionally connected to their ideas, that they're willing to disregard key points of information. But that is going to change as we enter the new renaissance, as these young kids are growing up and they're questioning absolutely everything about life because they're able to see and analyze people's lives from the time they're teenagers to adults and they can see how their perspectives change. So when a young child is watching someone's ideas change throughout life, this makes them think differently about how their views and opinions might change. These younger generations are able to see how these so-called status symbols, having a very nice house, having several nice cars, really doesn't make you happy in life or even less depressed. The younger generations are beginning to see that what makes people happy and content with their journey through life is skill and knowledge development. I believe that discovering your passions in life through skill and knowledge development will lead you upon your life task and inevitably make you happy and content with your journey. But these so-called status symbols won't. They're not gonna make you happy with your path in life. Once you attain it, you're gonna want more. But I have faith in this world. I have faith in the future. I have faith that we're going to transcend a lot of these cultural perceptions that we have in society. And this, once we enter that, is when things are gonna have a serious change. Because when we're following taboo things in life because of the almighty dollar, when we are willing to justify ridiculous notions in our own lives that make us hypocritical and contradict ourselves, we are just as bad as anyone or anything we're trying to stand up against. We can't be stewards for the world when we are hypocritical in our own nature. And this is slowly going to fade. It's slowly going to fade as we get rid of these cultural perceptions in life. I have faith in our world. I have faith in the coming generations and I have faith in the new renaissance.